Hello and welcome back to How to Build Software Without Coding. I'm Mr. Hackathon and I show you how to build software without coding. And in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to use the composer in the cursor editor. For those that don't know, cursor is a relatively new uh, code editor that's taken the software development world by storm. Why are we even talking about this on a channel that focuses on no code and low code? Because this is a way to get started on making your app, your web app, your Chrome extension, whatever you want to make without coding, at least not directly. We're going to get started and I'm going to show you how to use the composer to do that. So you first have to download, if you watched my previous video, you have to go ahead and download it and you will find a code editor just like this if I open it. You'll find a code editor like this. For those that are not familiar with coding, this next part might not make sense, but it's just like Visual Studio Code. So it's very, very familiar to use for anyone that is a little bit experienced with coding. What we're going to do is open a folder. So I am going to find my pinball folder. So right now, this is completely blank because we don't have any files in this folder. So what I'm going to do is press Control and I to pull up this composer. And what I wanted, I can either type directly here, but what I want to do is open the control panel, which opens it really wide here. And what I what you're going to do here is give it instructions. So there's varying ways to give it instructions to create what you want it to create. And obviously, depending on your input, the output may vary. I can show you a website that's very helpful. So there is a website called composer.directory and people have been sharing their prompts that they've been given the composer. So this is based on the language they want to create for or the library they want to create for. You can see free.js here. You can see just a data science category we are going to create a node application. I think there's only one example. So if we take a look at this example, I can copy and adapt this. And if you're not that technical, a lot of these things won't actually make sense. But even if you're not that technical, going through this process will help you learn somewhat how to code. Obviously it takes a long time. It takes practice it, but it practice, but it will teach you, teach you some technical aspects of coding. We are not going to do something as complicated as this. We're gonna just add a couple of lines. So if I go back, I'll show you how simple this is. I have said, you are a node.js developer. Your goal is to generate code for the index.html, styles.css, script.js, and the index.js file for a traditional arcade game. The game is an endless running version of Pac-Man. So we're gonna change this game and say, the game is a game of pinball. So this is where we'll start. We will maybe do edits a little bit later. We'll just see what it comes up with. I go ahead and press enter. And now what it should do is generate the files that I've asked it to generate. So you can see here, uh, index.html, the styles.css, the script.js and it should give me instructions how to deploy this so you're gonna see here to run the game make sure node.js is installed it's telling me to install express.js by running this and opening the web browser so this is how we're going to be able to deploy it at least locally so I am going to click accept that should be good now we have our code to be able to initialize this as a node application we have to run some commands from the terminal so we open the terminal and the first command we want to run is ntm in it And then what we want to do is npm install 
spelling that wrong. Express. So you would, in, in reality, for a real project, you would add a better folder structure than this, but this should be okay. And then we're going to do node index.js. And you can see the games running at this server locally. And we have our game. So now I have to figure out how to actually play this game. So we've got two arrows. So the left arrow triggers that left flipper. You can see there. The right arrow triggers the right flipper. And when it goes down below the flippers, then you lose. But at the top, the boundaries are fine. Every time you hit it, or every time it hits the flipper, you get 10 points. Very, very simple. So now if we want to make adjustments, we can come back to the code. And let's say we close this term. Yeah, let me close this. And what I'm going to do is highlight this. And I'm going to say add instructions above the game. So what you should see, you should add some instructions here. And then we can just accept that. So we accept those changes. What I might also do is come down to script.js and say, let's see. No, let's just leave it as that. We'll keep it very, very simple for now, just for the sake of the tutorial. And what we'll do is do node index.js again, just to show you. If you did want to change some behavior or how the game works, you would go to index.js and change how the game works. You can add additional files, additional functionality. So it's running at this local server again. And actually, did I save those changes? So we are going to go back. I need to save these changes and run it again. JS. So now you can see, if I click here, now you can see it's added um, how to play, not in the right place. We can query it again and tell it to add it in the right place. But you can see this is how you start to develop applications with AI. Very, very simple use case here. A use case that I have done recently, just trying to think of how to open this right now. This application helps you pack for trips. So let's just say I'm gonna be gone for two days in Tokyo and this is an adventure I'm gonna go swimming I do have access to laundry taking a check-in bag I'm a heavy packer with a medium suitcase in the spring all I do is press submit and what I should get is baggage re recommendations on what to take and this has been built in a very very similar way with cursor and additional tools, but cursor was the primary tool I was using here. These are the things you can start to generate, can start to create MVPs, which is the whole point of this channel. Like get it going from idea to a tangible thing that is working and that you can give a user. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and happy hacking.